Hey guys, I hope you're having a good day, and I hope you had a chance to read um, by Thornton Wilder, read the play The Happy Journey um, to Trenton and Camden. Um, interesting little play there, but you saw even though the play did deal with some some sad things, right? Did you figure out why they had gone to see the older daughter? Like all through the play, it's just you hear the mom saying that she's been sick, right? But then when they finally get there and they get to visit her, did you catch? What had happened, right? She had um, lost her baby. Her first baby was stillborn, and she had had a rough time of that. And so um, the family is is back visiting her now. And so um, even though that's a sad thing, he deals with it in just kind of a a way that just shows, you know, that this is life, and this is uh, what happens. Death is a part of life, and sorrow. Um, as a part of life, but he doesn't, it doesn't have like this overall pessimistic, depressing tone to it. Um, there is something though that I did want you to pick up on. And I'm wondering if you caught, it's on page 685. If you caught, what was the mom's wishes for her children? What did she wish? It was interesting what she wished for her children. Um, if you look on page 685, because she didn't wish for them to be rich or to be famous or um even to be happy but if you look at her wish um she said her wish for them and she says i can make wishes without waiting i can tell my wishes right now do you want to hear them caroline's like no mom we already know what they are you know we've already heard what your wishes are you want me to be a good girl and you want arthur to be honest in word and deed so that's what she wished for her children that they would be good that they would be honest. And that was her wish for her children. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that little play by Thornton Wilder. And again, this summer, if you have time to, to do something and you want to um, watch something, you should look up and watch Our Town. Uh, but today we're going to talk about Jesse Stewart. So if you look in your book on page 690, we're going to talk, to, uh, talk about Jesse Stewart. He was born in the Kentucky mountains to a very poor, very uneducated family. Um, he was educated in a one-room schoolhouse, but his education was kind of sketchy because in this region during this time, um, if it was harvest time or time to work in the fields, then the, the kids were kept home so that, that they could do that kind of work. Um, so he had to help on the family farm so he didn't have really a steady, a good education, but he did manage to attend high school. He was the first person in his family that was able to do that. And after that, he later went um, to college and he earned a teacher's degree. He wanted to be a teacher. So he did go and earn his teaching degree. And then he was a firm believer in the potential of education. He thought that education is the key. If we can, if I can just educate these children, get them to see more, to dream big, to see that there's more outside of life than just you know living on a farm and doing that for the rest of your life. He wanted them to see the potential that was in that. Um, so he was a very enthusiastic teacher. He became a principal and then he became an administrator um, in um, uh, lower uh, parts of Lower Ohio, Upper Kentucky, Northern Kentucky. And his crusades um, for better education helped these young people. And the reason he left teaching though he didn't uh, remain in teaching for his entire life. And I put it on the screen here for you to see. The reason he thought teaching was, quote, because I thought I couldn't make enough to live. I raised sheep, lectured, wrote novels, and made money, but my heart was always in the classroom. So after a while, he had to leave teaching because he just couldn't make enough money to support himself as a teacher. So he had to do some other things. But he says, even when I did those other things, my heart was always in the classroom. Um, and this selection here that you're going to be reading, The Thread That Runs So True, this is an autobiographical account of his teaching experiences there in Kentucky. Now, this selection that you have is just a very short part um, of a book, his book, The Thread That Runs So True, which is a wonderful book. If you are interested in being a teacher, you need to read this book. It is so inspiring. Um, I read it. I loved it. It inspired me um, to just be a great teacher, an enthusiastic teacher, to love your students, to love um, your subject. And 
Uh, it's just a great book. And this is just like a little excerpt, a little portion from that book about his teaching experiences there. It uses a story. He tells a story of something that happened while he was teaching and his little tiny hole in the wall school, rural school out in this country and all he just had the poor um, mountain kids that came to his school, but he taught them and inspired them to work hard and to learn. And he took them to this um, academic contest against this other school um, that was a more um, a bigger school, had more students, um, wealthier students, and and put his his students from his tiny little school, put it up against them, and his students actually won in the contest. It was a great story, um, a great event there. But he uses a story to kind of make a point. And this situation, um, of the this selection that you're going to read, it shows three things. It shows the importance of traditional moral values. It shows the spirit of the mountain people. And he just, he felt, he loved those people. And it shows their tremendous spirit. And it shows the value of a committed teacher, the difference that a teacher can make. And I love his quote there that I put up on the screen, uh, on the screen. I'm, I am firm in my belief that a teacher lives on and on through his students. Good teaching is forever, and the teacher is immortal. I just love that. Um, his main argument is that if teachers would inspire their students to attempt great things, then the students will accomplish great things. And you guys know, like, if someone believes in you, how much that inspires you to try harder and to think, you know what? This person believes in me. I'm going to believe in me. I can do this. Right. So I hope you will um, enjoy this story. It's not it's not very long. Uh, so read this story uh, for tonight. And I hope that it will just be encouraging and inspiring to you, um, especially if you want to be a teacher or even if you don't want to be a teacher, just that you would want to inspire someone to to try to try big things, to believe in someone and what a difference that can make. All right. That will be what you need to do. Don't forget that Monday we have our Silas Marner presentations. So make sure that you have your paper written and you're ready to share that with me on Monday and then be ready with your presentation. Uh, so we'll have those. Um, we will do a Zoom meeting and do, give our presentations on Monday. I will be attaching on Monday as well a study guide for you for the literature test that is coming up. So that you can be uh, filling in those answers. You can get the answers from the slideshows and the presentations. And then um, you'll be working on that. Wednesday, remember, your grammar exercises uh, will be due. And then you will um, take your grammar exam on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, you will have your literature test over this, this last unit. And uh, then we'll be all set. So those are the things that are coming up next week. Just... Email me if you have any questions, and we will see you on Monday.